Good, Good morning, morning Super, Super readers. readers! Thank you for joining us in our Valley PBS classroom. I'm Mrs. Nix. I'm Mrs. Hammock. And I'm Mrs. Vang. This is a place for us to learn, practice, and grow, grow our brains to become even stronger readers, writers, and thinkers. So let's get started by warming up our brains with some ear training called Daily Phonemic Awareness. All right, super readers, today I'm gonna to challenge you just a little bit. We're gonna take a different skill. Instead of working with just phonemes, we're gonna work with syllables. So I wanna just remind us a little bit about syllables and finding our syllables. You can clap them out. We've talked about taking, so I could take um, hammock and we can practice uh, whenever our chin touches our hand, if we put our hand kind of below and we say, hammock every time that our chin touches our hand that's a syllable because we're basically listening for vowels mm -hmm. and you know what an, is another strategy strategy that i use to teach my second graders what's that i would teach them that you can tap and count mm -hmm. so like the word hammock i say hammock and that's two syllables that's a great way so to do that. Just another way absolutely okay so here's our example today we're going to start oh Wait a second, I almost forgot. Did I say the addition and deletion piece? So mm. today, not only do we have to find our syllables, but sometimes we're gonna take a syllable away mm. and sometimes we're gonna add a syllable on. Okay. So let's start with deletion first. So the word is unfair, unfair. So okay. how many syllables do we hear in unfair? Unfair. Unfair. Two. Okay, two. two. All right, so we have unfair. unfair. What if I took away un? What do I have left? Fair. Fair. Nice. Okay, how about armchair? Armchair. How many syllables? Armchair. Arm two. 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 Armchair. Arm chair. Okay, take away the arm. What do we have left? Chair. 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 Nice. All right, let's do a little addition this time. So I'm going to start with hair, hair, and I want to add the syllable e. e. Put them together. Hairy. 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 Ah, <laughs> all right. How about this one? Stare. Okay, so we start stare. with stare, stare, and I want us to add ing. Ing. Stare, ing. Put it together. Staring. 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 Okay. Great job. Nice. So, always a great way to practice our listening skills, especially when it comes to chunks of words. So we can always hear those chunks or those bite-sized pieces in our words, right? Mm -hmm. I love it. All right, let's get dancing and warm up our brains today. I love this one. It's a Friday. It's a good one. <laughs> time for us to wrap up our learning with the chair card. Okay. So I'll see you guys later. Okay. okay. We'll see ya. All right, super readers, let's head on over to our word work board. And today is Friday. We're going to review our chair card and all of those sound spelling patterns. We're going to read some words and then we'll build some. And I 
I have a few tricks up my sleeve when we come to building. So I hope that you will be ready. Do you think you will? Let's call for our friends to come and join us so they can help us. Hey guys, are you ready to come read? Oh, yes! Ah! Woo! Oh, <laughs> mercy, <laughs> they gave me a scare. <laughs> I know, because I saw the word, scare. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice, good. Mm -hmm. Good reading. We've Very good. We've been practicing a lot, Mrs. Hammett. We've been Hammett. practicing. We have been. You guys are on it. You have learned a lot about the chair card. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking since it's Friday, we should review the sound spelling patterns again just for our super readers at home. Okay. Um, that way they can kind of start getting it locked into their brains. What mm -hmm. do you think? Cause, yeah, because this, this was a hard one. It was. Uh, it was. I agree. All right, here we go. A I R says air. A I R says air. A R E says air. A R E says air. E A R says air. E A R says air. Very good. All right. Well, here is our first word, and let's blend it together. You ready? Let's try it. Air. Hair. Good job. Mm -hmm. All right. I think we know this word. Oh, mama. <laughs> <laughs> but let's read it anyway. Here we go. Sk sk air. air. Scare. Good job. And this word here is t. t air. air. Tear. Tear. Very nice. All right. So because it's Friday and we've practiced all three of these spelling patterns, I'm going to see if you can figure out which sound spelling pattern to use when we're building our words. Okay? okay. So the first word that I want you to build with me is stare. 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 So what's something you need to know before you start telling me the letters? Uh, uh, I was just going to say, Mrs. Ham, can you use that in a sentence? Oh, nicely done. Yes, because... There, there's the word stare is spelled in two different ways. Mm -hmm. So in order to spell the word I'm talking about, you need to know which one it is. So I am talking about um, be careful not to trip on the stare. Mm. Okay. Okay. We did that one the got other day. Got we got did. It. You're right. I think I've got it too. So it has a consonant blend at the beginning. The mm -hmm. st. So the S-T. Very nice. St. And st. we're using the A-I-R says oh, air. That is right. Good job. St. Air. Stare. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Good job. Is that what you were thinking too, Ricky? Mm -hmm. Good thinking. All right. All right. You ready for the next one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've done this word before also this week, but remember, we're reviewing and practicing because it's Friday. All right, I'm looking for the word flare. Flare. <laughs> oh, that was my work, because I love to do things with it. Flare! You're right. Okay. What do you think? I got this. It's a, it's a F L. This is mm -hmm. fl. 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 And then air. Air. A R E. Okay, now you are Lair. right. But you know what? I think I made a mistake last time when I used this spelling for flare. Because the spelling that I was talking about where you had flare should be with this spelling mm. flare. But this is also a word flare. Do you know what a flare is? Is it when someone's had an accident and they put little flares, those little, they look like little candlesticks? You're right. Out on the road? Yep, and they, they <clears throat> have a glow, right? They're red mm -hmm. glow. They're red. And that is this spelling. So I made a mistake and, and got you mixed up, and I apologize for that, but I wanted to make sure to clear that up today. So mm. flare can be spelled both ways, and that's one of those tricky ones that we need to have a sentence or some context so we know which one. That was mm, tricky. I know, I apologize. All right, but you know, even teachers make mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. It's so, okay. All right, okay. Everybody makes mistakes. And we just have to learn from our mistakes and, right. and keep going. 
Mm-hmm. All right, how about the word wear? Tina likes to wear a yellow bow on her head. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, what would we do with that? I think it's going to be the last spelling that we have on the board, the E-A-R, and we just need to put a, w- a W in front. Very So W-E-A-R. Nice Spells wear. Done. Wear. Mm-hmm. And you said there's not a lot of words with that Mm-mm. E-A-R that makes that air sound. That is true. That is true. There are not a lot of them. Um, but we still want to make sure that we recognize it when we're reading. And I put some words here that we've worked on all week long so that you can see some of the different spelling patterns. So this is the A-I-R. Here's our A-R-E and then our E-A-R. I could have added a lot more words for this A-I-R and maybe you guys can help me with that a little bit later Mm -hmm. um, because I think it's important to see all of those words, as many of them as we can think of, so that we start to get that visual Remember in reading, we did some visualization. Mm-hmm. We visualized. That means we made a picture in our mind. And that same strategy can help us when we're looking at words. Because if we've seen it often enough, then it starts to look familiar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you spell it a different way, you'll recognize that it doesn't look quite right. Mm-hmm. All right. Do you think you guys are up to that challenge? That mm-hmm. sounds great. Mm-hmm. Okay, fantastic. I'm going to let you guys go do that. We're going to read a sentence together, okay? Okay. Okay. Thanks for your help. All right. Here is our sentence for today. Beware of the tear on the chair. Did you hear all of those? Here's our A-R-E. Here's our E-A-R and our A-I-R. Great job, super readers. You have tackled one of the hardest spelling, sound spelling cards, and you've done it really well. You might need to keep practicing that, and that's okay, because we want to practice, 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 because then it brings those spelling patterns to our mind automatically. Speaking of automatic, let's go check our high frequency words, because those are words that we need to know automatic. Awesome job. Yes, Mrs. Hammock, that's exactly what we need to do. So high frequency words are words that we see often in our reading and writing. And so it's important that they are automatic for us. We want to be able to not spend a whole lot of time trying to read them. Um, And so if we can put them in our brains so that we can see them and uh, recognize them in our reading and then use them in our writing, that's even better. Okay. So, super readers, let's go through. We've got six of them we've been practicing this week, and I know that you are doing a fantastic job. Let's go through and read them big and loud. Here we go. Favorite, young, surprise, wonder, few, and gone. Today, we're going to do this one right here, gone. Spell it with me. G-O-N-E spells gone. Great job. So my sister made cupcakes, but now they are all gone. Hmm. I wonder who ate all the cupcakes. All right. Now, another thing that I love to do and to practice is to play a game. This game today happens to be a memory game. Now, in your memory game, You can play by yourself, you can play with friends, however you choose to do it. I set this one up just for myself and I'm looking for matches. Now, as I'm creating my cards, I gave myself a couple of different scaffolds or some some tricks or tips as I went along and I'll show you what those look like in just a second. But if I'm going through, I'm gonna select a card and I'm gonna read it, gone, and then I'm gonna choose Where might my other gone be? Let me look. (gasps) Surprise, that's not it. So then I'm gonna turn them back over and then I'm gonna go to my next card and see if I can find it. Ooh, I've got young and I'm gonna look over here. Ooh, now look, they both match. So because they both match, I can just leave it up like that and I can go to my next card and see, ooh, I've got surprise, and I think it was over here, and I've got surprise as well. So if you notice, I also color coordinated 
my different pictures. Now, on this side, I made kind of a little chart that's gonna talk about some of our rules, and so sometimes that's super helpful to have up in your classroom or in your bedroom as well. All right, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to our story, and then Mrs. Vang is gonna come back and help us do a little comprehension challenge. Are you ready? I'll see you in a, in a little bit. Nonfiction. It's Labor Day by Francine Thompson. Chapter one. What is Labor Day? Look at the calendar. It's the first Monday of September. That means it's Labor Day. Most grown-ups love Labor Day. It means getting the day off from work. For many children, the holiday means saying hello to a new school year. Children used to work in factories like this. Did you ever wonder why Americans celebrate Labor Day? Labor Day is a day for Americans to honor working men and women. Long ago, workers didn't have it easy. They had to work very long hours. They never got a day off. They weren't paid fairly for their work. Even very young children worked in dangerous jobs. Today, our nation has laws that protect workers. Some laws make sure that workers are safe at their jobs. Some laws make sure that workers get to take breaks. Other laws protect, protect, protect children. These laws make sure children go to school instead of going to work. These workers must wear hard hats for safety. Cafeteria workers deserve our thanks. Labor Day is the day Americans unite to say thank you to workers in our country. We thank our bus drivers, crossing guards, teachers, and other school workers. Labor Day is also a day for taking a break from school. So let's have some fun and celebrate. Chapter two, let's celebrate. Have you ever gone to a Labor Day parade? Some cities honor American workers this way. Wave a flag, hold a balloon, and cheer as the parade goes by. Maybe some clowns will surprise you. Going to a parade is a fun way to celebrate a holiday. Listening to music outside is a nice way to relax. Strike up the band. After the parade, some towns have free outdoor concerts. It's nice that almost everyone has the day off. That way the whole family can share in the fun. Don't be shy. Get up and dance to the music. Pack up the picnic basket. Labor Day is a great day to get together for a picnic. Family members might meet in a park that has picnic tables and grills. What's your favorite picnic food? It's fun to share a picnic with friends. Quiet time with family can be relaxing. After lunch, a few family members might rest under a shady tree. It's their day off when they have earned the right to relax. Would you rather play than relax? Then how about a game of catch or a sack race? Put on your flip-flops and wear your bathing suit. This might be your last chance to go to the beach or pool. Jump the waves, build a sandcastle, or dig an enormous hole. For many, Labor Day marks the end of summer. Tomorrow, it's time to trade your beach toys for a notebook and backpack. It's time to get back to work and school. Early September is often very warm. Another holiday. Did you guys learn a little bit more about Labor Day? It was interesting, wasn't it? So another nonfiction text. So today we're just gonna be practicing some responding to text questions. So I have some questions and I wanna see if you guys can respond to them from what you remember from the text. Now don't forget, if you were in the classroom, you can go back into the text if you have the story to find the answer. 
Okay? So the first question says, why is it important to remember Labor Day? And this one gave, it, gave me three choices. So I'm gonna read my three choices and I'm gonna see which one is the correct answer because when I have multiple choices, there's only one correct answer. So let's read. So it says, why is it important to remember Labor Day? A says, it's a day to go to the beach. B says, it's a day we honor all the hard work people have done in the past and today. Or C, it tells me when school starts. So what's the correct answer? Oh, I hear you guys. A lot of you are saying it's B. It's a day that we honor all the hard work that people have done. That's right, and that was in our text, wasn't it? Good. Now, the second question says, why do you think the author chose this photograph for this page? What does the photograph help you understand? So, I remember this page, and guess what? I'm gonna look at the photograph, but I'm also gonna look at the caption, because that's gonna help me. Remember, these are text features of, an, of a nonfiction. So, the caption says, children used to work in factories like this. So, this photograph helps me know that the author chose this photograph because it tells how hard children had to work. And the photograph helped me understand that even though the kids were young, they all had to work. Now, number three says, why do you think the author put a picture of a family on page 10? So here's that picture on page 10, and I see it right here on page 10, so I'm gonna think, hmm, why did the author put that picture on page 10? Oh, I know, it's because the author wanted me to know or to remember that Labor Day is a family holiday and families can go to the beach. That's one way that families can celebrate Labor Day together. Did you guys get that? Awesome job. Now, I want you guys to think about all of the facts that you've learned about Labor Day, okay? So get all of the facts in your brain because our writing prompt today says, let's go into our writing prompt, how do we celebrate Labor Day, okay? So there's two ways of doing this. One, we can remember all the facts that we've learned from the text and write details of ways that we celebrate Labor Day, okay? So here's my paragraph. So I restated my writing prompt, and that's my topic sentence. So my topic sentence says, we celebrate Labor Day a Labor Day in many ways, because the text told us lots of different ways that families celebrate Labor Day. And then I gave some information or some details, right? One way is to have a picnic and play games with your family, that's one detail. Another way is by going to the beach, that's another detail. And we can also celebrate with parades, three details, did you see that? So. Now that I have three details, I'm gonna end it with my concluding sentence so my reader knows that I'm done with my paragraph. And my concluding sentence says, all in all, Labor Day is a family day. And that was in our story also, wasn't it? So, you, do you guys see how I organized my paragraph? I have my topic sentence, I have three details, and then I have my concluding sentence. And that tells me that I am done with my paragraph. So I want you guys to write your own paragraph and share it with a friend. But I have another friend who has another story or another book they want to share with you. Let's see what, this, what the book is. Good morning, super readers. I have a book I want to share with you. Good morning, super readers. Now, I have a book I want to share with you. Oh, really, Kate? Uh, I have a book that I want to share with you guys that I just love reading. Do you know what it's called? It's, it's called, it's called Wherever You Go. That's what it's called. And it's by Pat Zillow Miller. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. I knew that. Well, I love this book, because guess what? It's about a rabbit who goes on a adventure with his animal friends. And, and guess what they go? They, they go all over the place. They go up, up to the mountain peaks and, and down to, to bustling cities. And, and, and down lots of windy roads and, and they discover this magical world that's right outside their door. Mmm, I guess uh, I, I love the ending. You know what the ending says? What does the ending say? I, I, I love it. It says, roads take you all over the planet, but then you always, you can always follow them back home. 
Oh, that's a good message. Uh -huh. This goes out to all my friends who are graduating. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at you. Don't forget, go on your adventures. But don't forget that the road always takes you back home. Oh, that's a good message. So if you would like to read this book, make sure you are checking out this book at your local library on Sora or at the county library. See you next time. Hey, that's you and me. That's <laughs> us. Oh. Hey, knock, knock. Oh, who's, who's there? there? Uh, June. June, June who? who? Uh, do you know any good knock, knock jokes? Oh, my golly. Hey, <laughs> oh you know goodness. what? That actually does a really nice segue because it is June. And yes. what do we usually do in June? Summer! Summer, Summer vacation! vacation. That's so, right. You know what, though? Even though we may be taking a break, that doesn't mean that you may not want to go back and revisit some of the lessons that we've done over the last couple of years. That's right. And you can do that on the www.valleypbs.org website. Or did you know they ha Valley PBS has its own YouTube channel? And if you're looking for our show, it's the Reading Explorers. And you can go back and revisit all of the different um, stories that you've listened to and the sound spelling cards that we've introduced, the high frequency words. It might be a great way for you to keep your skills up there so that you're ready for that beginning of the new school year in the fall. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Hey, super readers, we're super proud of you. Yep. And we hope that you have a fantastically safe summer uh -huh. and a wonderful weekend. So, right. happy Friday. Happy Friday. We'll see you Bye. guys. Bye. Oh my gosh, how fun. Summer. Summer vacation.